Eternal God and Father, once again we come before you, humble in heart and spirit. Just want to thank you for your mighty saving grace, the marvelous, rich indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your glorious name that's above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the one to come. Just want to thank you for your presence this afternoon and thank you for allowing us to be gathered here and protecting us all day long. Father God, tonight, just want to say thank you. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for being a comforter. Thank you, Father, for your word makes us wise into salvation. Just want to say thank you. Call some names, Father, because these are your people called by your name. Some are grieving, some are ill, some are in pain. We just pray in their behalf. We intercede tonight that you, Lord God, touch once again, that you would be a comforter to them at this time of deep sorrow. But Father, nothing goes beyond your view. Just want to say thank you, Lord. And now, Lord God, hands have been raised. Thou knowest the request thereof. We ask that you, Lord God, would meet our needs as only you can. And we will be so careful to thank and praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Tonight, I'm going to kind of do water. Uh, you see, didn't nobody hardly pay no attention to me Sunday, did they? Oh, uh, you did. Oh, yeah. I'm praying. Let me call your name right now, Nedra. Nedra's trembling, Lord. Yes. <laughs> and um, I say that. I'm not saying that to chide you. I'm saying it because whenever your pastor has a burden on his heart, it would be good to take heed to what the message is. And we're not here to be tyrants or any such thing as that. We're just trying to share with you what I feel the Spirit of the Lord has given unto me to give to you. And I think it's worthwhile. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to call your attention to a portion of God's Word that probably most of us can quote by ver verbatim. And one I've used numerous, numerous times, love the particular portion of God's Word that I'm getting ready to read tonight. It's one that we've always spoken of concerning the doctrine of a pre-rapture, pre or rapture pre-tribulation. In other words, we believe that what is being written here in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 gives us tremendous ammunition that the church of the living God will experience a catching away prior to the tribulation that will affect the entire world. I don't know how far I'm going to get in these verses because i got so much in my head right now teaching these different classes that I'm kind of getting the dovetailing on me, okay? But I was thinking about comfort, uh, and this particular portion of God's Word is very clear. Comfort one another with these words, or encourage one another. And the eternal God, as I said on Sunday, I believe, I'm what they call a plenary Christian. That means that I believe in the total inspiration of the scriptures, that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. I believe from Genesis to Revelation that God inspired and holy men of old speck as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I believe that the New Testament that comes to us and these phenomenal epistles, how God took a man like Paul to give us 13, at least 13 of the epistles that we read in the New Testament of the 27 books. This particular one that I started off with is probably one of the earliest books of the New Testament written by the Apostle Paul. And I want to say to you that I think many times people don't take the Bible serious. 
They look at it as just being literature. There is no book on the planet that's more potent than the Bible. The Bible is the unadulterated word of God. He commands man, don't add to it, don't take away from it. He said, every tittle or jot shall be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But he said, my word won't pass away. The word was in the beginning. What a tragedy that we exclude the Bible from the classroom. For since the Bible is God speaking to his human creation, that is a tragedy that people don't read it and obey it. When you pray, you're talking to God. When you read his word, he's talking to you. We would know nothing about the origin of mankind if it was not for the Bible. I see some of those who are in my class, and I might mention this before I read this, because I'm going to get to a portion of it where Paul says that the Lord spoke this. Well, I want you to know he spoke to Moses too. And he said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Some of your well-known scientists, men like Isaac Newton, Louis Pasteur, various ones who believed in the validity of the Bible. I don't know if they embraced the salvation of it, believed in the validity of it. They believed in the Big Bang Theory, that there was a power that brought the universe into existence. I believe it also that there's a great power that's above every power that spoke the world into existence. Scientists have now determined, and certainly this is phenomenal, that when the Lord said in Genesis 2, dust thou art, from dust I made man, they have now discovered that every element in the human body is found in dirt. Every element is found in dirt. Surely, even the scientists have to say, mighty God is he, may man. Dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. Because God's word is true. As I shared with the class, the Bible is not a scientific book, but whenever it makes a scientific statement, it's always accurate. We would not have known how potent the verbiage of Moses, like we do today, when Leviticus says to us, the life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. And surely, any health practitioner, doctor, nurse, the one thing they do when they roll you in is check your blood. If they want to know what's going on in your body, they test your blood. They do a full panel. The blood tells a story. Blood and urine in an EKG is what they call a physical. The life is in the blood. And so we know that what Moses said is a reality, a scientific fact. And thank God for his word. Why do I bring that up? If all these scientific discoveries, you see what I'm saying, I'm teaching now science and faith this semester, so that's why I got it's fresh in my mind. If we can see that these scientific facts back up what we know is already truth, it would seem to me we ought to believe every word that's found in the word of God. And not only should we read it, we should obey it. Whatever it commands, I want to be found doing. I wish more people had that type of mindset because we're going to be judged by the word. Hallelujah. In Thessalonians, see how far I can get today. I didn't get very far this afternoon. These are words of comfort. I'm reading from the NIV version, verse 13. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall 
asleep. Might I say something just about that? At this particular juncture, I'm sure it was gut-wrenching for many of the saints. Individuals that they loved so dearly were being persecuted and murdered. James thrusted through with a sword. All of the apostles, excluding John, killed at the hands of another. Multitudes, tens of thousands, but in the providence of God, God allowed it because God has a plan bigger than what we can see. What may seem like a tragedy to you and I will bring glory to Almighty God. And he uses the word asleep. He uses that so you won't fear death anymore than taking a nap because death to the child of God is the doorway into the presence of God. Amen. As I said on the you know, reading on Sunday night, it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. Whether you know it or not, that's a grace in itself. If you read the third, fourth, and fifth chapter of the book of Genesis, you will find out the damage of sin. It brought about disease, decay, and eventually death. But to the child of God, what might seem like a horror on this side, as you step through the door, it's glory. Because death allows us to enter into the presence of God. All right, now it takes, gotta have faith in God's word to stick with me on this one, all right? I was sharing with them in the class last night, and I guess I'll share it with you. When Adam and Eve sinned, transgressed, most of you know they only had one command to obey. Do not partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It also says something else. They had access to the tree of life. The tree of life would allow them to be immortalized. And there was no way that God could allow Adam and Eve, after they sinned, to partake of the tree of life and live on in sin, which actually is a gift. What if we have to live forever dealing with pain and sin? Sickness, can't die. Pain of murder, hatred, strife, and no remedy because we partook of the tree of life. So God put man out and said, I'm gonna put some cherubims there and they will have some flaming swords and they will turn every which way so that Adam and Eve cannot go back into the garden. Most believe that the garden is in Iraq, somewhere in the Middle East, that's where it began. And so for the last 6,000 years, man, amen, has been under the sledgehammer and the damage of what Adam and Eve did. And there was no one, no man, who could go into the garden and give us the victory that the tree of life could give us. But thanks be unto God, 4,000 years later, the second Adam came. And when he came on the scene, he's the only one that had the power to lay down his life and pick it back up. And he was the only one that could withstand being the victim of the flaming sword because he could die the death, but he also could raise himself back up. And now we have access to the tree of life because of the death, burial, 
and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died our death. Nobody else could do that but Jesus. Nobody. So he's saying, I want you to comfort my people, these that are being persecuted and killed. I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to be informed. And he goes on, he says, or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. The word of God says, the men that don't have him have no hope. They have no hope of a better resurrection. They will grieve because they have no hope because they do not embrace God. And he goes on to say, we believe. This is the community of believers. Thank God, hallelujah, we're in this community. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Mighty God. He's going to bring it a moment in time all those who died in him. I was sharing with Priscilla, I'm in a state now of, it's almost like a divine nervousness because I, I really feel we're sitting on the edge of the event that is written here. I do not know the day nor the hour and would not predict that, but I do know this. There is nothing that has to be fulfilled that's holding back this moment. Let me kind of take another slide on this. When I pick up the newspaper or look on my internet and see how the Palestinians in the Arab world are applauding our new president because they feel he will be sensitive to the Palestinian cause and demand the Israelites to give up the West Bank. That scares me. Amen. Not scare, scare, but it lets me see we're treading on dangerous ground. In the next two weeks, when the head of state should be elected in Israel, it's going to tell some kind of story. If Benjamin gets in, no, he's not giving up any ground. He is bent because he believes that God gave that land to them and they don't have to give it up. They are not going to reverse the 1967 war when the Gentiles no longer rule Jerusalem. You and I are watching this on television. We're seeing things that no other generation has ever seen. Where could we be? Hallelujah. From our chart and dispensational truths, if we are correct that man has been on planet for 6,000 years and the 1,000 year millennial where there will be peace on earth and goodwill towards all men. If we're correct, and I believe we are, just by time itself, we must be at the door of the catching away. Keep in mind, during the time of the writing of the Old Testament, a calendar year was only 360 days. Our days are 365. So we really don't know what time it is. From 1948 to where we are now, 2,000 years, it's past. Where could we be this evening? And yet, there's a tragedy running through the human race called apathy, nonchalant, don't care. To fulfill what the Lord said himself, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be 
when I come back. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving, and they knew not until it swept them all away. Thank God we're informed. Thank God. I don't know who I'm preaching too hard anymore that's listening, but I'm listening. I believe this event is about to take place and I won't take it back. And we need comfort right now. Our economy is rocking and rolling. The malls are almost empty. Jobs are being lost by the tens of thousands. Suicide in the armed services is up 28%. People are killing themselves and killing one another because they have no hope. Don't know if you're going to get a check next week or not. Don't know what industry is going to fold. And people are panicking. My Lord, surely we need comfort. What time is it? Violence has filled the land. 41 skirmishes going on around the planet right now. People killing. Diseases are cropping up that they thought had eradicated, had been eradicated. Things going on in countries, amen, that you and I are not suffering like they are, like cholera. No one should be dying of cholera in this day and time. But because the water is full of parasites, amen, and disease, that's all the people have to drink. Every day, 35,000 babies die. 35,000 babies per day. Surely, we need comfort. Amen. And you know as well as I do, anxiety is running at an all-time high. Amen. From the rich to the poor. Amen. What is next? Culmination of an age. I came to comfort you. Our departure is at hand. <laughs> Our departure is at hand. Then there's a great famine for hearing the word. And very few preachers that preach the word. This is the day where the false prophets, they look like they're in tune with God, but they don't carry his message. You cannot carry his message or be in, or be in a right standing with him if you do not dogmatically impress upon the people the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the message. It's the only message that can deliver a man. No death, burial, and resurrection, no hope for man. It must be emphasized. His ascension, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Very few in the religious world, amen, promote the necessity of being filled with the Holy Ghost. What a tragedy. I'm not making up anything. You can search this city. It don't take all that. It takes every bit of it. Because it's not your and my program. It's God's. God in his kindness in these last days has poured out of his spirit. My Lord, mighty God is he. One of the questions at the end of class last night I was asked, Pastor, what's the difference between soul and spirit? I said, well, you really only can distinguish the two. Because basically in the Bible, they're interchangeable. And I want you to know that the spirit being higher and the soul being lower, suchi, numa, numa being spirit, suchi being soul, amen. The soul is basically you, the seat of affection, amen, your life, amen. And so that is the immaterial, invisible part of you, all right? That part of you, that part of you can never, never be annihilated. It can never go into nothingness. It will always be aware of its surrounding. No wonder the creator of the spirit in his grace and mercy did something to rescue us from total divorcement from himself 
So he had to come himself to rescue us from Satan and the dominion of darkness. My spirit and your spirit, hallelujah, will never go into nothingness. Hallelujah. At the demise of my flesh, I'm like Stephen, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Hallelujah. Because the spirit goes back to the God that gave it. That's why Jesus could say, fear not man. He only can destroy your body. But he can't destroy your spirit, your soul. But fear him who is able to destroy body and soul in hell. You know what that says? Watch this. That means that the unsaved in eternity have a body to house their soul. But they won't be redeemed. Everybody gets another body after a while. Whew. Thank God I'm getting my glorified body that I can stand in the presence of Almighty God where my sanctified soul has been redeemed. At the demise of a man, his spirit immediately goes back to the God that gave it. Hallelujah. Absent in the body. Present with the Lord. So, as I told the afternoon class, God don't have panic attacks. He's not nervous. Only we get nervous. When Adam, Eve, did what they did, God had a remedy. Amen. Maybe I should drop this on you. Do you know this first creation was designed to die? The creation that you now see in God's infinite wisdom is designed to die. If it wasn't, he wouldn't have to say there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Because the first heaven and the first earth pass away. He says, behold, I make everything brand new. New heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's so mind-boggling and make your head hurt when you think about it. Huh? They say with the naked eye, you can see less than 1,100 stars at night. With a telescope, maybe 3,000 plus. But with Hubble, now we can see 50 billion galaxies and 200 million stars in every one. And he says he knows them all by name. My Lord. And yet, in his grace and mercy, he cares about one human being, how he can touch one human being. We are the people who believe in a personal savior. Our God saves one at a time, and he does it by himself. No one can dispense the Holy Ghost but the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're in this room tonight and have the genuine Holy Ghost, know that all of your allegiance belongs to the one who died was buried and rose again and ascended back to heaven and sent you his spirit. I don't think I'm making sense here. To have the Holy Ghost, there is no gift in the universe on a par with it. Hallelujah. Amen. Phenomenon. No wonder they call Azusa Street the phenomenon of Azusa Street. And it was because when God judged the dispensation of human government, he did something that no doubt blew the mind of those individuals. Remember now, in Noah's day, everybody spoke one language. But when they made a mandate to build a tower to heaven, 
God confused their tongues. And the reason why you have all these nationalities and different tongues, because God dispersed them throughout the known world. And because they could not converse, it separated them. So people of like languages commingled. Am I right? Amen. But thanks be unto God. And keep in mind now, who could confound their language? Nobody but God. They didn't study Chinese, Japanese, Russian. God is the one in his phenomenon caused the inhabitants of the world, whether it be 200 million at that time or whatever, began to speak in languages and no longer could be in fellowship because they couldn't communicate. So each one went to its own way. But on the day of Pentecost, God reverses it. When I spoke in tongues, you spoke in tongues. The reason why we're in this room is because we have the light, precious gift with the same initial evidence. Speaking in a language that we never learned in college, high school, or junior high. If you really have the Holy Ghost, the moment you begin to speak in tongues, that was because of divine power. That power came into you and overtook your most unruly member and caused you to give him glory and praise. The tongue that lied and cursed. He took that tongue that it began to speak in another language, giving his name glory and praise and honor. So stammering lips in other tongues is the rest and the refreshing. That's why we don't want to give anybody say, you got none of, you, you want to know this for yourself. And if there's any one gift anybody ought to ask for, it ought to be the gift of the Holy Ghost. Woman, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask of me to give. I would give you living water springing up in the everlasting life. Because can nobody give the Holy Spirit but me. But if you have my spirit, if it bears witness with your spirit, you will know that we're now in fellowship. And not only are you my child, but you're an heir and a joint heir with me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm so glad we've experienced the phenomenon of the ages, the outpouring of the divine essence of God. Amen. For he said, in these last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Please don't take it for granted having a baptism of the Holy Ghost because nobody can give you the Holy Spirit but the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth that is glorified and sits at the right hand of authority. Nobody can look down through the portals, amen, of this universe and see you on your knees and give you the essence of his spirit but the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody has that kind of Amen. But Jesus Christ himself, blessed be his holy name, he can speak. Cause you to speak. Mighty God is he. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just came back to comfort you. I don't care what's going on on this planet. Nobody can rob us of our salvation. No matter what goes on on this planet, don't you allow the newspaper and the current events to blow your mind. God is in control tonight. God is on his throne. God is doing his own work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for doing something to my spirit. Hallelujah. There's an invisible part of me. I, I didn't see you when you came in. All I know, I felt the power, and I, and I see the manifestation. And I and it, uh, looked like almost every day we find ourselves giving God the glory, and we start praising him and begin speaking in tongues again. He yeah, asked me on the inside. That's me. That's me. That's me. I am your redeemer. You got the witness on the inside. Ah, my witness is greater than the witness of man. My witness testifies to the water and the blood. My witness testifies that I've, amen, granted you repentance. My witness testifies that there's power in the blood. There's nothing like the blood of Jesus, nothing like the name of Jesus, nothing like the spirit of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Balder dash for all this health and wealth and, and you're going to get rich when you come. I'm not trying to find myself a new Toyota. I'm trying to get all the way to glory. I'm not worried about a, amen, a tri-level house. I want to see what the house that God has prepared for me in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, neighbor, man at his best is vanity. My life is a vapor. Tell somebody I'm getting ready to leave here. I got to leave this, my surroundings. This dimension can't not last much longer. Hallelujah. Oh, this ain't home. We have no continuing city here. Abraham understood that. He said, I'm looking for a city where I'm a rich man and I have plenty of wealth and I got fine children. I got beautiful women, but I have no continuing city here. So he left Ur of Chaldees and he went out looking for a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. He becomes the father of the faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. For touching a man down in the midst of idolatry and bringing him out. Amen. Of his idolatry situation. Amen. And calling him now the father of the faithful. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Promises him a son. And 25 years later, oh, Sarah has a little baby. Amen. By the name of Isaac. And glory be to God. When he gets around 25 or 27, the Lord says that I want you to take that boy and sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. Hallelujah. He said, me and the lad will be back because he was a type in the shadow of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But thank God when he got ready to kill the boy, amen, a voice came out and said, don't do the boy no harm. Hey, there was a scapegoat in the thicket, and glory be to God. They came back down the hill letting you know there is a resurrection. So I want you to know that I will do what I said I would do because I'm God all by myself. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm not trying to brag about this, but I know we're in the right faith. Uh, I want to emphasize that God wants you to know you're in the right faith. You've been highly favored of God. I don't know. Amen. You can't look at the outside appearance. Something doesn't happen down in your soul. You look in the mirror. You say, why me? You say, thank God for grace and mercy. Amen. I don't deserve all that I'm experiencing. Lord, I just want to thank you because God knows who will thank him. Amen. Many of the rich men won't thank you. So God said, I'll go out and get the weak. I'll go out and get the ignorant. I'll find somebody that'll give my name some glory. Not many wise, not many prudent, not many well-educated. I'll go get somebody. Amen. I probably can't even cross a T or dot an I, and I'll give them my salvation. They'll come in giving my name glory. I ain't talking about everybody in the church is ignorant. I'm just saying, a lot of folk that gets too smart for God, I'm glad I'm not that smart. I'm glad, amen, I believe him according to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why I want you to come to church? Because uh, I see the day approaching. Uh, amen. I'm not doing that. Amen. The, the take up an offering. Amen. Churches are suffering right now. Finances are falling off everywhere. Amen. When people lose their jobs, they, you lose the tithes and the offerings. Amen. But I done tucked away a little money, a piece of apostolic, so we can stay open a few, a few more days so I can say what I'm saying. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear me. Amen. Yeah, I done tucked some away, y'all. Amen. So if, if it drops off, we can still pay the note. Amen. For a few more months. Uh, if we have to come down here and have chili dogs, amen. We'll have somewhere to come down here and we'll give God the glory. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Banks are failing, but uh, thank God his house is still standing. He will have a house. He'll support this house. He'll take care of this house. You know why? Because his name is in this house. His spirit is in this house. His power is in this house. Hallelujah. He's been exalted in his house. His name is being promoted. His spirit is moving in here. I can feel him in here right now because God dwells in the midst of praise. He's in this house right now. And I give his name. Huh, glory. Glory, 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 glory to his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I see what's going on all around us, sickness everywhere, pain everywhere, emotional problems everywhere, amen, spiritual problems, economic problems, I, I'm praying even so come Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm groaning like the rest of the creation. Lord, will you please come soon? Amen. When are you coming back, Lord? I don't know, but I pray, even so come Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I think we ought to thank God that he said I'm coming back and to rescue you, and I'm praising God for that. It's all right. Amen. Amen. To hasten his coming. It's all right to be eager for his coming because the Bible says to do so. And so it's all right for us tonight to ask our Heavenly Father. And I said, I thought he said somewhere, he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Come on, hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I'm looking for the kingdom to come. I said, I'm looking for him to come back.
back. Uh, he said, I'm coming back again. Uh, he said in St. John 14, 1 to 3, I will come again. Uh, in the book of Acts chapter number 1, uh, he said, why stand ye gazing up? Uh, this same Jesus uh, who you see going up, uh, he's coming back in like manner. Uh, I want you to know that's the word of the Lord. Uh, Peter believed it. James believed it. John believed it. Paul preached it. And I believe it also. Soon and very soon, uh, the king is coming back again. The Lord is coming uh, with 10,000 of his saints. Uh, Enoch believed it. And for this I give him praise. I'm standing uh, on the word of God. I'm trusting in what he is saying. Glory be to his name. I tell you, I can't hardly get through this. Hallelujah. 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 Tell somebody I'm so glad I found it out before I left out. Oh, hallelujah. I said I'm so glad I found it out because once upon a time I was left out. But by one spirit have I been baptized into one body, and for this I give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Tell somebody as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Hardy, that young man right there, raise your hand, young man. That young man's over here from West Andes. He's come tonight to be baptized in Jesus' name. He said he talked to me tonight. He wanted to know, amen. And what I said to him, he'll tell you, I wasn't harsh or mean. All I told him, let's do it like the book says. I'm not here to debate tonight. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. All I got to do is go to the book of Acts. And everybody that was baptized in water in the book of Acts, they called on the name of Jesus. When Paul got his sins taken away, they said, call on that name. And they called on the name. Paul said, I got to get rid of my violence. I got to get rid of my murder. I got to get rid of being a blasphemer. I need my sins taken away. Said, Paul, get baptized calling on the name of Jesus. Have thy name, call my name. Call my name over the eunuch. Call my name over the Samarians. Call my name over Cornelius. Call my name over Lydia. Call my name, call my name in the name of Jesus. Call the name, call Yeshua. Call his powerful name. His name saves. He's Jehovah our Savior. Exalt that name, praise that name. Honor that name. Give that name to glory. Because there ain't no name like the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What should we call him? Call his name Jesus. He has saved his people from their sins. Who is he? He's Emmanuel. He is God with us. Glory to Jesus. Give his name to God. The Lord thy God, he's in the midst of thee. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your name, Lord. Thank you for your name. Thank you for your name. I thank you for your obedience, young man. My ministers are here. They're going to baptize you tonight and they're going to call that name over you, the name that's above every name. They are, they're already here. They're going to baptize you in water in the name of Jesus. Tell somebody, as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I done put him on. I'm draped in Christ Jesus. 
I'm draped in his blood. I'm all covered by his presence. And I just want to give his name the glory. I'm draped in Lord. No matter what happens down here, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Whatever our present trials and tests are, they do not have the power to extract us from the presence of God. No matter what heartache we may have to suffer, no matter what death we may have to die, it will never separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Look at somebody, say, neighbor, my outward man is perishing. I'm feeling pains I ain't never felt before. There's stuff going on in my body telling me that my outward man is perishing. But I want you to cheer up. My inward man is renewed every day. I feel something down on the inside. Oh, hallelujah. And my momentary afflictions, it's going to almost be over within a minute. Glory be to God. I got another building, eternal in the heavens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I got hope. I got glorious hope. I'm saved by hope. Hope that make you not ashamed. Oh, hallelujah. I got hope. Back to First Thessalonians. Whew. Hallelujah. Anybody glad they're here tonight? Tell somebody, you can't get this everywhere. They don't, they don't have this at the bridge, at the theater. They ain't serving this at Staples Center. Ain't happening at Staples Center. It ain't, it ain't going on at the Kodak Center. Oh, hallelujah. Got little, God got little houses on, on streets, amen, where saints go in and give God the glory. Uh, hey, hey, hallelujah. God's got little places, amen, that are not recognized, amen, by those downtown. But God got little places, amen. If they would step through these doors, they would feel the power of God saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You're looking for rest for your soul? Come to me. I'll give you rest. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Come on here, First Thessalonians 4. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Young folks, some of you young folk probably ain't going to see 25 years old. The Lord is at the door, y'all. The golden moment is about to take place. Uh, I can't tell you exactly when, uh, but you ought to be able to feel the rumblings everywhere. You can see what's going on everywhere. Uh, some of y'all done got apathy in you. Say, yeah, they've been seeing that a long time. I tell you what, you better get another grip. Amen. You better look for them every moment of your day because he said amen in a moment when you think not in a time when you don't think I'm coming I'm showing up and as the late sister Hendrick said when he shows up he's showing off amen I want you to know he's coming back shortly hallelujah it's an instantaneous evacuation there'll be no time to get ready say I'm sorry or hold off amen it's going to happen in the moment and the twinkling of an eye because God said I'm going to do it by my wonder working power and whether you know it or not glory be to God right now your physical life is in your blood. But what some of you need to know, that the life that's going to raise you up is also in your body. The very life that's going to keep you alive throughout all of eternity, God already gave it to you. He ain't got another knife to give you in the rapture. You got it right this second. The Holy Ghost in you is the life that will change you and sustain you throughout all of eternity. You got it right now. You don't get it at the rapture. You got it when you got filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Your earthly body is going back to the ground, but the spirit that's in you is going to quicken you. That's going to be your life giver throughout all of eternity. Oh, hallelujah. Tell somebody I have received eternal life. Eternal life. This life is in the Son. He that hath the Son hath life. Did you hear what I said? He that hath the Son hath life. 
The son said, I'm going to send you another comforter. It's going to be Christ in you. It's going to be the hope of glorification. Thank God he's already in us. The day you first spoke in tongues, life came into you. You passed from death to life. And all oh, the more we get educated in the word of God, oh, hallelujah, our praise to be educated. We'll be so thankful. We'll lay down. Sometimes we won't even be able to go to sleep. We'll be so ecstatic. You mean, Lord, thou thinkest, Lord, of me. When I consider who you are and what you do for you to think about me, let me give your name to glory. Let me give your name to praise. Awesome God are you? Awesome God are you? Awesome God are you? First Thessalonians. So the sample, you came back for two dips today, huh? Hey Amen. I see you back there at noonday and nighttime. She's gonna she come back and get some more. Hallelujah. Tell somebody the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't say it unless you mean it. He's everything to me. If he ain't everything to you, don't even say it. Don't even lie. Amen. But he's everything to me. I can't speak for nobody. He's my everything. I said, he's my everything. He's my center and my circumference. He's got all of my attention. Every fiber of my being is saying hallelujah to his name. He's my hope for the day and for tomorrow. He's the joy of my salvation. He's my everything. He's my savior, my redeemer, my reconciler. He's my God and my guide. And I give his name to praise. He's my father, hallelujah. And I'm glad he brought me in with the many sons that he brings into glory through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, I just want to thank you that 2,000 years later, somebody is still thanking you for going to the cross, being stripped naked, dying in my place, being humiliated by men that you give in breath, that I might have this Holy Ghost tonight. You allowed yourself to be stretched out on a cross, that I might speak in tongues. You allowed yourself to be humiliated, spit upon, amen, that I might have this joy. I got to give your name the praise. I want to thank you for going to paradise and coming back, that I might have eternal life. Glory to his name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Soup knew where to send you. Did you hear what I said? Soup knew where to send you. Hope he gave you some crackers to go along with the soup. You don't know. He knows what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad to be in church. I don't know what to do. I'm so, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. There is a joy working in me right now, I'll be honest, and there's a sadness. The joy is that we're out of here. The sadness is that so many we got to leave behind. That's the sadness. The sadness is that I got relatives and friends, amen, acquaintances, amen, neighbors, amen, that are going to be left behind because they didn't believe this. Oh, hallelujah. They laughed at it. They mocked at it. They're going to repeat what happened down in the 18th and 19th chapter of the book of Genesis. They said, I got to get you out of here. You got to leave, Lot. We're getting ready to destroy this place. Said, do you have any more in your family? Said, yeah, I got two that engaged to my daughters. Went out to talk to them, and they made fun of it. They laughed. But the next day, they got burned up with all the inhabitants. Amen. My God, my God. But thank God, God sent somebody to snatch him out. Tell somebody, I'm getting ready to be snatched out. Oh, hallelujah. Grab the hand of Jesus because he's ready to snatch us out of here. Oh, hallelujah. Don't even look back. Don't even say goodbye world. Say hello heaven. Glory. I said say hello heaven. Glory be to God. It ain't goodbye planet earth. It's hello heaven. Glory be to his great name. And we shall see him as he is. Back to First Thessalonians. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now verse 15. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, hold it here, somebody got to be alive in the church when he comes back because the Lord said it. I don't, think that's, I don't think that's sinking in week in and week out. I really don't. Tell somebody, it could be me. There has to be somebody alive in the church. As the late Bishop Golder says so gloriously, most of the church has gone through the grave. 
but there's a segment has to fulfill this portion of God's word. We could be the generation, let me do better, we are the generation. <laughs> According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we, includes, see, including itself, because you're looking for the Lord to come too, who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. I can't imagine what that's going to sound like on that day when he speaks, when he speaks with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that which we are still alive and are left will be caught together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, comfort or encourage each other with these words. If these words don't encourage you, you ain't gonna be encouraged. But there's a key point here. It's the dead and the living in Christ. I-N is big here. You got to be in. It can't be a professor. You got to be a possessor. You got to be a possessor. This was on Paul's mind throughout his entire ministry. Second Thess 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Let me pick up a verse there. Verse number 17. Notice. Notice this. Now, brothers, when we were torn away from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. For we wanted to come to you, certainly I, Paul did, again and again. But Satan stopped us. Satan got in the way. And he'll try to stop you. He's been stopping a long time, but he can't win. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ? When he comes, it is you. Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Peace apostolic, you're my glory and my joy. When he comes, you go back with him. First Thessalonians 3, Whew, verse 12. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other is that what it says? Overflowing love. I tell y'all it's not an option. It's a command. Huh? Love will hide a multitude of transgressions. There's no such thing as pleasing God holding a grudge. And, and you can't fool yourself. Don't you? Oh, oh, I'm all right. No, 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 no. We will know by your body language if you're all right. And actually, I feel sorry for the one who won't forgive. Because actually, they're miserable. You know why? Because they have the real Holy Ghost. No matter how they try to excuse themselves, they, ain't got, they don't have no joy. They may be making up some joy, but they ain't got no real joy. Because you know what? Holy Ghost can talk when I shut up, because your conscience can show enough preach. And guess what? If you're really a child of God, you're going to get a spanking, because he chastens every son that he receives. And don't you ever get to the place that you think you have arrived until you arrive, because ain't nobody arrived yet. We're going on to perfection. Whew. 
That'll hurt your feelings. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. You know what that dovetails with? Even Enoch, seventh of Adam, prophesied. God's got some holy ones. He's coming back with. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5, verse number 9. I'm thanking God for this. All that's getting ready to try this whole world, it says we will not be a partake of it. But verse 9 says, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation, deliverance, through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, that whether we are awake or sleep, we may live together with him. That goes again. Some will be through the grave, and somebody going to be awake to fulfill the scriptures. I really do believe this dispensation you're in right now, at this, in this point in time, we ought to be on the edge of our seat. You know why? Because we're looking back in retrospect. We're looking back. Huh? I wish I could get the figure of this new computer that they're about to bring out. It's crazy. It's so phenomenal what it can do. Can't think of the name. It was, in, it was on the news today. Modern technology. How could Daniel say what he said without the anointing of God? And knowledge shall increase. Are we living in a technological warehouse now? Huh? No king has lived like us. Solomon don't, didn't have what you have. He didn't have no flush stool. There wasn't no flush toilets. He didn't say fill her up. He said giddy up. There wasn't no Denny's. No in and out burger. He didn't go and flip a switch and the lights come on. No king back there lived like you living right now. Knowledge going to and fro. You've gone places that no, none of those kings could even go. Solomon didn't leave the Middle East and come to America, but you flying over there. We've gone to Asia. We've gone to Europe, and Jesus never traveled more than 200 miles from where he was born. That's about from here to Fresno. And here we go to Frisco, New York, Phoenix, in a heartbeat and call it a short trip. No generation has lived like us. They didn't go in and get cans of spaghetti and sardines. There wasn't no canned goods. Their little children couldn't run the refrigerator at night and open it up. There wasn't no refrigeration. Think about it. Wasn't no nail shops. Let's go see a movie tonight. Wasn't no movies. Wasn't no street lights. There were torches. Nobody had a 38 or a Uzi. Had a hammer and a sword. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> but we are fulfilling what the 12th chapter of Daniel so clearly said. And then he speaks of the resurrection, my Lord. Mm, mm, mm. 
He died for us. Whether we awake or sleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you were doing. You got and I got a job to build somebody up, not run somebody out. That's why you don't want dissension because somebody will pick up that spirit and stop coming. And they need to be encouraged. You don't, because you got an idiosyncrasy. I don't like so-and-so. I don't either. Why? I don't know. You don't like them. And they put their sin on you. No, 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 no. I'll be the judge of that, not you. You know I'm telling the truth. Lord, forgive us. Do you know why? I'm busy trying to encourage you. And I'm in some kind of battle. I'm trying to encourage and somebody's saying, I don't want him to encourage you. Cause I got folk in the church fighting against me. I'm trying to help you. And they try to say, don't take all that. There you go again talking about the rapture. I'm tired of hearing about that. You won't be when it takes place. Especially if you left behind. <laughs> Verse number 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Tell somebody he's got to come back. <laughs> sure he's coming back. 2 Thessalonians 2. Mm, mm, mm. My Lord. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, that's the rapture, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supposed to have to come from us saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. That day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose, will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshiped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he's taken out of the way. You know what that is? That's the church full of the Holy Ghost. This world would be chaotic tonight if we weren't here. As bad as it is, you haven't seen full-blown wrath yet because the full-blown wrath won't take place until the church is taken out of the way. My Lord. Whew. Second Peter, one. I'm almost finished for the night. Just trying to encourage you to hold on. These last two chapters I'm going to deal with, and then we'll be dismissed. Peter was aware that he was about to depart. He said in this first chapter of 2 Peter, verse 3, that God's divine power has given us everything we need for life, godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate in the divine nature and escape 
the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Verse number 12. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. In other words, the Lord said, I'm getting ready to receive you. He told him about 35 years prior, one day somebody's going to take you where you don't want to go. He said, he showed me now. That's that time. Mm -hmm. He wasn't <laughs> lamenting that he was going to heaven. But I got to believe had to be some anxiety for somebody to drive spikes through your hand and feet and hang you upside down. That was excruciating death that Peter suffered. Dying is the hard part. Death is the glory. I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor, glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, this is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. Whew. Verse number 19, and we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. That's Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians, chapter number 15. Yeah, thank you, Lord Jesus. First Thessalonians, so I'm sorry, First Corinthians, chapter 15, I'm sorry. First Corinthians, there's no 15th chapter in Thessalonians. First Corinthians, chapter 15, verse number 19. If only in this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes through also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits. Then when he comes, I love this, those who belong to him. Aren't you glad you belong to him? And then in conclusion, very familiar portion of scripture, verse 50, I declare to you brothers that flesh and blood, I've already talked about that, cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. I tell you a mystery. And then he says it again. Look how redundant it is. We will not all sleep not all of us. Somebody going to be awake. My Lord, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. My Lord, and we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. Mighty God is he. I came to comfort you tonight that our departure is at hand. What's getting ready to be fulfilled is Revelation 4 and 5 and soon following Revelation 6. There's a man on a white horse that's getting ready to gallop. He's the Antichrist and he may be revealed in the next few years but the church must be gone 
encourage one another with these words. Our departure is at hand. God bless you tonight. <laughs>